Welcome back to another episode of the Educating the Reckless podcast with your host, Apollo PN. No better, Nina. And we're back again for another wonderful episode. We got a lot of, a lot of things to talk about. A, a lot, lot of things to talk about. Yeah. A lot of things going on in hip hop, and uh, I'm glad we got to be able to talk about it. So first off, before we get into the thing, I just want to say that I lost our five pounds from my- uh, Yay, five pounds. good job. You know, I'm down to uh, 180. Uh, okay. On the scale, it looked like 181. I say 180. Was uh, your goal to always lose weight, like, since you came back? or? Uh, to be honest, I was almost hitting 200, to be honest, sometime in February when I was in Edmonton. I, okay. I hopped on the scale, and I was like uh, 190 something. And I was like, damn, I can't, be, I can't be this big ever. And then, you know, some dude called me fat. And I was like, all right, fuck it. <laughs> that's not, that's not going to happen ever again. So You I weren't mean, fat. I, I could tell you gained weight when you came back. I, yeah, I gained weight. So I've been cutting it down. My skin's been looking a lot better. Uh, I've been feeling a lot more energized. Uh, the burpees don't hurt as much. And I was able to do like 20 burpees straight today. So my body's oh, okay. getting better. Yeah. Uh, I'm losing weight. Um, my stomach, my, my looks like, I feel like some fat percentage is going down. Uh, I just hope after the end of May, um, I'm going to do another challenge, do like 100 squats and 100 push-ups a day and see how mm -hmm. that goes. You know, I think challenges help better things because it makes the workout a little bit more like, okay, there's a goal rather than just workout, just the workout. Yeah, I hear yeah. you. Have you taken, did you take a before, like a before picture? To yes, see I did. Okay, yes, good. I did. So I took a before picture. I took a 10 day after picture. I'm going to take a 20 day after picture. And then I'm going to take a 30 day after picture. Hopefully I think are... those make it so much more motivational. Like I took, I remember when I took my first before and after pictures from two weeks and in two mm -hmm. weeks I was like, holy shit. Like I could see my goal was to get a six pack back then. You knew me at that point in my life. And yes, it, I did. yeah, I didn't get the six pack. I got four. But yo, getting them abs is, is, is tough. I'm starting to see that. But you it, know, I don't know. For me, it's not that hard. Well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not skinny no more. I mean, I'm skinny, but like I'm I'm like I'm thick skinny, you know? Yeah, yeah, but I don't know. I feel like I always had good like core strength. Like I used to go to the gym, uh, and there was this one person who used to ask me for help, like with an ab workout and they couldn't it was very simple where you like lean back on your tailbone and you're doing the russian twist side to side legs up like crossed but up in the air and they couldn't yeah. do that they couldn't hold it and i was like is this normal or am i advanced i mean you you got better core strength than most uh I, my core strength is getting a lot better at first you know how i had those rolly things i mm -hmm. couldn't do them things i had to, i couldn't even go all the way down now i'm able to do all the way down the only thing it just hurts my knees to be honest yeah yeah, yeah but i could do it now yeah i could do like um, 15 that's good yep. I, those ones are those ones are hard for sure um but yeah what All else right. did you do this week uh i did an interview with uh, another uh, toronto rapper inside an undisclosed location and i yeah was it social distanced no nah, man i came out of there smelling like fucking weed and cigarettes man like a trap house yeah no i no not it's, <laughs> no it, okay. no well i came out of there smelling like weed and, and cigarettes man every time i go there every time i do an interview for them I come out and I, I smell my clothes. I'm like, fuck. I just cast them away. in the wash. Yeah. Yeah, I can't do nothing with it. It's I hope you're like, not like dapping them up when you see them. I am dapping them up, to be honest. Oh I'm doing God. all I'm doing all the dumb shit. I'm I'm doing it was you know, all of that. You talk, I'm doing you know, all the <laughs> You know who you have to like really avoid at this time, like in terms of like dapping up and touching is drug dealers. Because those motherfuckers, first of all, there's no such thing as social distancing work for them. And they're touching everything and everyone in the most money, and they care the absolute least. Yeah, I mean, they, they pay me in cash, so that means I'm fucked up. Yeah, you should wash your money when you get home. Um, did you do anything for Mother's Day? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, no. I didn't. My mom's, my mom's an essential worker. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, so she works all the time. So she was here. She just, you know, I said happy Mother's Day and stuff like that. Um, you know, and then she was sleeping because she's working overnight, and then she had to go mm -hmm. deal with that. But yeah, that's uh, what it. What about you? What did you get into? Um, for Mother's Day, we just well, I had this really great idea because I wanted to do like a winery, like in the backyard, like a wine mm -hmm. tasting thing. But I saw like a week before that the weather wasn't going to be good, so I'm saving that for her birthday because her birthday and my dad's birthday is also this month too. Lucky me. So they my mom's birthday I, this month too. Yeah. So, um, I was, yeah, I'm going to basically set up like a, a fake winery in the backyard since they're closed. But for Mother's Day, we didn't do anything. We just made breakfast, lunch and dinner for her and like just made sure she didn't have to do like any housework all day, pretty much. So like, yeah, did the dishes all day. Oh, uh, yeah. that's, that's very nice of you. Hold on. Dishes all day. How, how much dishes do you rack up within a, a day? Lot. There's seven people who live in our house. So 
Yeah. Okay. It's a lot. Yeah. But okay. that's what I did for Mother's Day. During the week, I didn't really do much. Uh, I started watching Ozark. Um, Is that good? Yeah, it's actually pretty good. Um, I started watching. A lot of people I know were watching it, so I gave it a shot. And it's pretty good. The episodes are very long, though. Mm-hmm. Um, like an hour. And then, um, yeah, that's really it. Working out and still trying this whole meditation thing oh yeah so how so week it's been a week now how's the medical day seven or day eight it's kind of still hard a little bit i don't know my mind is like a hamster wheel it just goes and goes and goes and goes and goes it doesn't stop like ever so it's still kind of hard but like i'm trying is it it, to be honest i feel like for me when i do the burpee thing it's like the double digit days is when you get into like your your mindset is like okay everything's starting to get a little bit better i don't know why it takes so long for the body to kind of adjust but it takes a time for the body kind of like to get there and then it's like when you're finally there you got when you finally get the wheel going in a proper way it's just Bomb. Yeah. Got it. No, I hear you for sure. Yeah, I, I got to give it time. But thing, did you watch? Uh, do you want to do the insecure thing now, or you want to? Yeah, do it yeah, yeah. Just, okay, just, just knock it out. So you watched the latest episode, right? Episode five. Yeah, I watched okay. everything. So I, I caught up. <laughs> I, I binge watched everything. Uh, all I gotta say is Molly is a terrible friend, and I saw from day one, episode one. A lot of people said that they they could tell she was a terrible friend. I think for me, when I like, I knew she was not a great friend, and she was always kind of like jealous and a little bit of Issa but also trying to like one up her every time yeah <clears throat> sorry I think um for me what really triggered me was when they went to <coughs> sorry can you talk I have something in all right so uh so episode one starts off with uh are they inside a grocery store episode one or no, <clears throat> we're, no we're I think episode, that was two. what are you doing episode one again episode two? I don't remember but everything seems like a <sighs> Anyways, now I'm back. So <laughs> basically, <laughs> basically what I was going to say was, um, yeah, when she was, when they were at, this is a spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't watched the newest season, but yeah. when they were at Tiffany's house and she had the baby and then they were like, oh, um, like, Molly saw Issa talking to Lawrence and she was like making up this whole like story in her head about what was happening between them and trying to make it seem like Issa was trying to be shady. Yeah. And then yeah but so with the latest episode people were in a debate about whether or not molly was in the wrong or isa was in the wrong in terms of uh isa reaching out behind molly's back to get her boy molly's boyfriend to ask for a hookup with vince staples for her block party yeah or molly saying she was setting a boundary and not asking her boyfriend when isa initially asked her so so when i saw that episode and i guess i was trying to figure out I was I, until I didn't happen until the end. I was like, "What is what does Nina want to talk about?" But yeah. when I finally saw it, it was like, "Okay, so I see what happened." Molly, like I said before, Molly is a terrible friend, and she's always trying to up one upper. But the, not even but. There's no buts. Is Issa asked her friend in a very she, Lisa was against uh, Issa was against the wall, back against the wall. She was uh, a rock in a hard place. She really needs to get this event going. And so she asked Nathan, who reached out to her and was like, hey, man, can you talk to your homeboy about helping this situation because I'm in a bad place? And Molly was like, oh, my, this is a very important thing to me. I won't put boundaries. And it's like, bitch, shut the fuck up, man. Yeah, I think so. This is what I think. I think Molly was OK. It's one thing if you want to put boundaries in a relationship or a friendship, that's totally fine. But I don't think Molly was serious about the boundaries. She was you could tell the way she was doing it and the lead up with all the stuff, uh, making it seem like East was trying to talk to Lawrence and all that shit. Like Molly was doing it out of like a place of like, I'm trying to hold you back kind of thing. Yeah. Like crabs not- in a bucket mentality. Yeah, like not from a good place. So I think that was wrong. But I also don't think, I also think Issa should have just told Molly, like, okay, since you're not helping me, like, by the way, I'm asking Nathan to ask your boyfriend, since you don't want to ask him because that's going to ruin your relationship. My friend who I once hooked up with is now going to ask his friend. So it's not anything to do with you, but I'm just letting you know that I'm going to ask him kind of thing. And I think that's. You feel like Issa should have asked? I feel like Issa should have just told, Mo- not asked Molly if she could ask Nathan. I think she should have just told, just told Molly, like, hey, I'm okay. asking Nathan to ask Andrew and left it at that. Like, yeah. Issa- Molly can't stop her at that point. Like, yeah. that's her I, connection. So I feel like the whole, the whole situation between them blowing up at each other is just a, a combination of a whole bunch of things that's been piling up. Mm-hmm. And, and that was just the last straw in Molly's mind. But their friendship was already done. Technically, because Issa said, I don't fuck with Molly anyways, episode yeah. four or five. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? So the shit was done. And Issa was like, you're here. I didn't I didn't expect you to be here. And Molly was trying to play the whole be cool friends. And then yeah. her boyfriend was like, all right, we can stay. It was like, no, we got to go. So Molly was battling with the idea of continuing the friendship. But Molly's a fake ass person. And, and Issa was like, Issa's, you know, as a friend, as Molly, because Molly's successful, right? She mm-hmm. has everything going for her. And as Molly to look at Issa as someone who's making her way up, and finally getting things right for herself to look at your friend down and, and help them in when they're in a pinch like that come on you a whole bitch man yeah that is some it's crazy like a, shit. it's like seriously like it's just like a jealousy of something like yeah. that's the only reason you would stop someone from doing that and jealousy is an ugly disease my friends yeah man that is that is terrible man all right man let's into some local news okay. some COVID. Oh, yeah, i forgot about that part this is just like a quick thing um yeah. but on sunday uh this is not the case anymore but on sunday there was only there was 294 new covid cases which was the lowest number in six weeks which is pretty good yeah. um some businesses reopened on monday uh like garden centers nurseries like those flower places and yeah like home depot yeah like home shops and shit like that right yeah. um pickups and shit like yeah. That. yeah and i was looking at cases and there was as of sunday there's only there was fourteen thousand recoveries over fourteen thousand recoveries twenty thousand cases therefore there's only six thousand presumptive and confirmed cases in ontario which is pretty hey, good man we are cur- what, curving curving the disease what is that uh curving no uh uh something the curve is what's happening we're uh i, I don't know the word it's something curved. <laughs> we're curving it, though. That's what we're doing. We're curving it. We're, uh, we're stopping the curve. Yeah, there. I think yeah, that is yeah, that it. I think, I think that's curve. what it is. I think yeah. that's what it is. Stopping the curve. That's what we're yeah. doing. Uh, so uh, I just want to say that this is great. Uh, I got I got personal friends uh, that started back work up again. Uh, some of them work inside, like you know, uh, restaurants and retail shops. But mostly for people that work in the retail shops, they're mostly doing inventory mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Not necessarily. Uh, doing anything in terms of engaging with customers and then my friend yeah. that works inside the restaurant uh, mostly just making food because as people stayed in more uh delivery pickups and stuff started to pipe up pipe up and people were there beforehand couldn't necessarily handle the load so i mean hey it's good we're getting things back going my mom asked me if i wanted to uh, pick up a job at one of her nursing homes that she works at or one of, uh, no. whatever we're nursing her and just start sweeping the floor and i'm like oh. i told my mom i told my mom how much they're paying she was like maybe 20, 21. I'm like, I right, set that up, boy. <laughs> Why don't you go back to Amazon? Hell fucking no, man. I, what's, uh-huh. Yeah, once I'm done, well, I treat, I treat some I, I treat most work, I think all work at this point in my life as an ex-girlfriend. Once that shit done, it's over. I ain't coming back. <laughs> too many jobs out here, too many skills right. I have to where I don't necessarily need to go back to the same person twice or the same job twice. You feel me? I hear you. Yeah, so that's like pretty much just the local stuff that really happened. That's really all, right. all I want to touch on. Now let's get into a very pressing topic. All right, so we're gonna be. There's a lot of things that going on that went on in the hip hop culture and in, in, in the pop media sphere. And it's mostly and, because of one person. Yes, it is. It is. It is Takashi Six Nine. We're gonna start off with that. You know what? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's Six Nine is back. The, the way he came back was so massive. Right, he dropped something on Thursday. Say, I'm going to go live on Friday. His new music video is going to drop on Friday, and from Friday on, people were just anticipating what was going to happen next. What was his music going to sound like? How was he going to address this topic? And it amazing. So I don't like. How do I? How do I get into this? So Friday comes out, and Meek is doing Twitter fingers. The reason why Drake called him Twitter Twitter fingers. In the first place. He be twinning. I don't know what me shut the fuck up. I was talking to I was talking to someone about it. I was like, yo, Meek be talking a lot. And I asked, like, yo, what did Meek get charged for to him be so streets? And it was like the, the petty crimes that he has on his record is just petty shit. And I'm like, damn, Meek was moving like he was moving got like, kilos of coke. <laughs> <laughs> just because he's been on just because he's been on paper for 10 plus years. I'm thinking dude has some heinous crimes against his name, but Dude got some petty crimes on this shit. <laughs> and it was yeah. just too stupid to kind of just not the the prolong the probation period for him. It's like, you know what I mean? But that's enough about me. He was tweeting, and then that's how it even amped up the set in terms of the, the hype behind Takashi coming on live, anyways, because you have a big star like Meek Mill 
uh, talking about we wanted to apologize. People like you is the reason why Pete Nipsey is dead and things of that nature. And it was kind of people kind of just saying, why are you even bringing Nipsey's name up right now? It, it's totally That's kind of what I thought. I kind of thought it was, I get what he was trying to say, but I kind of thought it was disrespectful to Lauren, if anything. Yeah. Yeah, it, and it, it it was not even mutually exclusive, to be honest. Like, you don't have to bring apart, because the person who I, took the life of Nipsey Hussle, that was a killer. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I to this day, I haven't seen anyone really say nothing crazy about the dude that took Nipsey's life, the way that they're talking about, you know, Takashi 6 9 You know what I mean? Because people are talking about 6 9 this, 6 9 this, this. Not to say, like, you know, the because the, this is entertainment, because Rappers are entertaining us, the audience. You know what I mean? We don't care about the street rules as much as these rappers want to uh, believe that we do. You know, everything that you put out there is just for a personification uh, of the of the image that helps build you as the artist and the brand. You mm -hmm. know, for something that people to attach onto. But at the end of the day, we're still being entertained on it. But so Nick doing all of that, and then you know Takashi had his little things in the comment section, and then when he went on live, he had already dropped his uh, music video which was Gooba, and people were like, okay, I thought he was going to miss a beat, but he didn't. He was still going the same, still same energy, same type of, you know, Takashi or 6 9 that we remember from two years ago. It's just that now he's only playing- He's been locked up for two years? Yeah, 2018, man, well, almost two years. It's been 2018, but like it was later on in 2018. Oh. But yeah. I didn't uh, notice. Oh, stop lying. <laughs> stop lying. Uh, so- uh, so he actually played into it. Like most, you, you, the, the, a lot of the fans and a lot of people who were spectating were wondering how was he going to address this snitching thing or, or you know, informant thing that we all seen, the world has seen, is broadcast to the world. And he did something that a troll was supposed to do. He played into that motherfucker, and he got a lot of people aggy. A lot of these street people aggy, these street rappers aggy. Uh, and um. Yeah, so like, well, I, that's, I, that's what I say. Like, what are your thoughts on it before we go any deeper? So, yeah, I definitely thought the Meek Mill bringing Nipsey into it was kind of wrong. I understand what he's trying to say, but yeah, I do think it was a little disrespectful to Lauren, at least, and the kids. Um, because it didn't have anything to do with this. Um, and I did not watch his live. I did not listen to his music video. None of that, which I'm sure you knew anyways. Um, but I'm also not surprised at the records and stuff that he broke mm -hmm. that day since he got home I'm not surprised and i'm not really surprised that he played into the rat thing i think i could see that just because leading into it when he got home and he was writing comments on instagram and stuff he was playing off of it already a little bit so I, i'm not really surprised he did it like i i never he was never the kind of person i expected an apology from or like to own up to his actions I, and i don't feel i don't even feel like he should because who who are we to really ask for an apology from him he did nothing to us yeah he did nothing to us but i think uh he, i think what the problem is that a lot of rappers have is he's because if we think about his fan base yeah a lot of it not a lot of it but it can be attributed to rich white kids who have never I don't know, seen a drug deal go down in their life or something, you know, mm -hmm. like just kids, very privileged white kids. I'll say that. Um, or very privileged, any kids for that matter. And um, I feel like the problem is that Takashi is kind of the exact, like the example he's setting for that is making it seem like it's okay to do those things in the streets. And yeah. if you get involved in the streets, you can get away with that. So then it's like, putting out this message to like these kids, like I'm going to go work for a drug dealer and not pay him his money and, and run off with it or something like I'm something stupid that, like that. I'm, I'm glad that you brought this up because that's the argument that a people, that's the, that's the one thing people like to bring up as if the fact that rappers haven't been glorifying that lifestyle to begin with. So it's kind of like you're saying for, for the past 20 plus years, even more rappers have been glorifying, uh, coming up jumping off the porch as they say and getting into the street life and serving a pack and taking lives and things like that as as it was like yeah this is this is what i gotta do this is the lifestyle and that's like it's you street cred exactly and that not only backtracking it only making it seem like that's what you need to do to be recognized in the world right so i'm gonna far i'm gonna go as far as to say the rappers made what takashi did acceptable Beforehand, the rappers before Takashi made what he did acceptable. But I want to put this out there is that 
Hey man, the whole snitching thing, people talking about, people trying to equate hip hop to street stuff. At the time, I'm a hip hop head. I like, I appreciate hip hop. There's a lot of things that go into the culture that's been from people who did a lot of culture vulture shit, the people who sold out the culture to the other. You know, for people to equate hip hop and street, you're only you're only making the, the hip hop culture more degenerate to what the other looks at it. Because hip hop is not about street stuff. There's, it's a plethora of people. It's just people showing their show, showcasing a story or a particular lens that people- A narrative. A narrative, right? So don't ever say, when I said, because I posted something on my blog page and I was like, yo, he's the hottest thing in hip hop. And someone's like, yo, this type of thing is not behavable in hip hop. There's a lot of, there's a lot of degenerate shit in the hip hop right now. So you can't start off with snitching because snitching from what I seen from movies and from televisions and from documentary, that's part of the game. People snitch all the time. We see Force 48 showing people snitching. And there's a lot of people who snitch whose life has not been taken. And the only reason why they're going after the Kashi is because he's the first of his kind, an artist that big who, ever, who, who was an informant and took the stand. And also, we live in a new type of time where it's like he, he's not, he was not known for killing people. He has no bodies. So it's even easier to look at him like he's soft, he's not built for that. So when you come at him, you could come at him, or a lot of more people who don't have that type of body could come at him and call him those type of things because they see his resume and it's like, yeah, yeah I, could, I could take him. He doesn't seem like a tough guy anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's like that one is, he's the first artist and he just doesn't seem like the criminal body. So that's why people are more lenient to say it and, and to talk on it. But we see like rappers like Rich the Kid, Rich the Kid ran, bro. Like, you know what I mean? There's a lot of, there's a lot of, I mean, I don't want to go too much into it because I see like other people probably going like into it and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But me coming from it, I like Takashi. I'm, I grew up in the suburbs. I'm a black kid who likes <laughs> hip hop. I'm a black kid who likes hip hop and I don't do none of that. So it, 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 I just want to end off by saying this. People that are looking at Takashi and then are picking a side at tribalism, as I would say, going like, I'm going to side with the street dudes. If you... I just want to ask, I just want to put this out there. Not that you don't, you can talk about it or people might think about it. If you believe in that, in that type of street code in terms of snitching should never, but uh, snitching should never be prohibited or anything or shit, snitching should never be done by any uh, circumstances, then you, you must adopt everything that comes with that ideology. Not only just that, you got to everything else now. Mm -hmm. So you just can't necessarily play the narrative. It's like, I'm, 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 I'm staying in the suburbs, but like, yo, that snitching shit is not unacceptable. Like, you know what I mean? Like, from out outside looking in, like, lock them criminals up. They was doing bad anyways. Fuck them. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and feel sorry for criminals. Like, the fuck I look like. You yeah. know what I mean? No, I hear you. I hear you. Um, yeah, I think uh, we can both relate on that suburban part. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I still, yeah, like, I understand it's a part of the code and shit, but it's just, to me, I'm very unbothered about all of it just because, yeah, like, I've never, I'm not sitting there like, oh my god it has to be like he had to follow that street code like or he had to have done this or that whatever like yeah. cool i can say that i think maybe you know maybe he shouldn't have snitched or something or i can say that it's fine if he did but like i don't i'm not that invested into to the point where i'm like yeah. i'm just like taking a stand like every time someone says it i'm like oh he shouldn't have done it like no i, I don't really yeah it doesn't affect me at all I'm, I'm only here to be entertained everything else that comes about it i don't really care yeah. As long as you entertain me, I'm a consumer. I, 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 have, I buy, I pay for a streaming site and I, I get, I consume your music, your music videos and the content that you put out there. That's exactly. It. You exactly. know what I mean? If you, if you wanted, if you were thinking more of the fans, then maybe you are the idiot that should be behind bars because you, you, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> but what I was going to say was, uh, so Chet Hanks, Tom yeah. Hanks, uh, son posted something in his story which i kind of well i not kind of i do agree with yeah. which is pretty much saying that like let me just actually read it for you it was basically talking about how six nine is scared yeah. so his story said i'd rather be broke and be able to go where i like slash do as i please than have a hundred billion and have to live in hiding with 24 7 security think about that for all you idiots calling six nine a goat and legendary he literally told you on the stand that the gangster image was just a persona to boost my career only to get out oh, talking about so hold on, pause, pause, pause. Meek said the same thing on the stand a few years ago. He said the same thing. What did he say? He said, he, Meek said, the image is only for rap. Oh, Yo, yeah. You, Future said that too. Future said that exactly. too about his drug use. I don't know why people use that as a, as a, 
as a, it's true though this, i think you, maybe because of how extensive it got with the kidnapping yeah. and the video outside trying to trying to set up a hit on chief keith and like mm. all that i think how extensive it got like i don't i don't think people care that much about drug use and that shit but i don't know and because we saw the footage you know what i mean all this rap stuff is a front yeah it's all the front when the when it comes down to it they will tell you understand hey man this is not who i am it's just an image to portray out there for my fans that's it that's yeah. it yeah don't it don't take i i can tell you personally all rappers are fucking liars <laughs> <laughs> i can tell you that personally they're fucking Eric really liars. is a liar too that's my boy but all rappers are fucking liars they're professional liars that's it yeah so anyways then he said uh don't be fooled by social media that dude is scared shitless but has no choice but to laugh and make light of it because he knows he's a marked man for the rest of his life either way mm -hmm. um all i see is fear basically is what he said uh, I, 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 I agree i do think he's scared mm -hmm. but i think he knows I think he plays it up because he knows he has all this security and shit right now. And like yeah. when someone leaks his address, he can get moved. I bet you when his address leaked, he probably shit his pants. He'd get moved like that though and saw that, but he's probably thinking about once this is done and his yeah. security is like, he doesn't have security and shit anymore for the rest of his life. Yeah. What's going to happen later on? To be honest, I could go on far and, and, far and, and say that I don't even believe anyone's going to touch him. What, what did they want to get out of it? He didn't, he has, he, he doesn't have any enemies. Besides Maybe in people. New York. Who's the Treyway guy? The Treyway's done. Treyway's done. I don't know. Maybe someone who's like a relative of Treyway and Treyway's mad done. that they're all locked up and is like, fuck this, I'm going to kill Takashi. Treyway's done. Like, all the rappers are not going to do nothing. What are they, like, who's going to really, like, this is, and this is what the rappers themselves are letting you believe is like, they think that snitches really get snitches, but no. Yeah. And it's, his. See, Force 48, how many people from First 48 has really died? I, there's been like, Endless seasons. <laughs> Endless seasons and zero deaths. <laughs> Don't believe anything the rappers tell you. They're from liars, man. They put, they put out a narrative to confuse you. Yeah. Well, man, thing, no kid hungry declined his two hundred thousand dollar donation. Yeah, I seen that too. And um, they their their statement was because they want to align themselves that have the same or a good uh, I, morals Brand, and values. Yeah, and yeah. Like, that. like they'll take Aisha Curry's donation, just not Takashi's. I yeah, can see. But I, I, that is, I, I could get it in terms of branding because that might hurt their charitable brand maybe over time. But at the same time, they probably taken donation from unscrupulous people before and they just never batted the eyes just because it's coming from a high profile person. And yeah, yeah, exactly. But they, they, they're taking dirty money. It's, it's been hacked. Yeah, well. But, uh, but, but before we transition real quickly, I just want to say that uh, we live in, uh, everything is going to kind of be in a sense. We live in a title till kind of type of society in terms of we like to expose even criminal activities. Yeah, like the that's true. From, even people from the UK, they be doing everything on Snapchat, running down on other rappers. And, okay, those the UK guys, I believe everything they do. <laughs> <laughs> I believe those rappers. <laughs> everything they do, I believe everything. <laughs> oh, all of them, I believe all of them. <laughs> they all gangster in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> they really do shit. <laughs> I believe all of them. But, um, but yeah, we live in a title tale type of culture in terms of we expose things like private conversation, we expose that to the public. You know, they, not to say this, people might use snitching culture, but I say title tale culture, uh, inform informative culture and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Where in terms of like, when you're talking to someone, you got to think about, are they saving my messages? I got to type in a way where they're not going to try to expose me to look bad. You know what I mean? They might, people, people have those type of thoughts when they're talking to people. You know what I mean? Are they sharing this conversation with someone else? Is it going to make me look bad, man? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's what type of culture we live in. That's the type of society we live in. We expose things. It's a true you know? point. That's the type of thing. And even going into the next topic is, is did you see the video of the prostitute going live with a man like this in the back seat? It looked like I a think movie. she had a knife. And it's like, what are we doing? Yeah. She snitched. Doing? She snitched on it. <laughs> it's like, what are we doing? You know what I mean? Like we, if you want, if you want to be, if you want to be mad about something, let's 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 knock down all the branches of why why this is happening because we let a lot of the low level shit like that prostitute holding up that man as entertainment to us. Yeah, Come literally, on, and waving a knife at him and yelling at him because he didn't pay her for the sex. Come on, man! This is the type of society we live in. It's the dinner. It's, it's what's that word? The dinner. I don't know. Degenerate. Yeah, here we go. Degenerate society. Yeah. yeah. 
yeah that was really fucked up and it looked like literally like a movie um and yeah i i yeah, just I, I hope it was a movie if that shit was real that's even worse i think it was real i think we would have heard by now if it was for a movie yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's facts all right so you see the you seen the news about shannon brown i i think dude's on drugs allegedly i'm saying he might be on on stuff so when I first saw it, I initially thought that he shot at them because they were trying to, like, they were trying to enter the home. I didn't realize they were accepted entry into the home, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then he shot at them after the fact. I didn't realize that. As they were enter exiting the home. So that means he shot at them probably as their back was turned to him on some coward shit. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like there's more to the story. There has to be. Like, maybe his assistant let them in and he didn't know. And, like, he was walking around the house and then he's like, what the fuck? And then yeah. maybe when they left, he just, like, he was like, oh, shit. Now's my yeah. chance. Did they exactly. Who let them in? What? How, do you, I, I, how do you not know that you have a for sale sign on your lawn? Um, I mean, I don't know. Maybe he doesn't look out the window. Who? who I don't know. Maybe it was a prank. <laughs> Maybe. I think he, I think you on the stuff because I seen that mugshot picture. He looks like he was on the stuff. Did he used to do drugs before? I don't know. <laughs> I googled. I tried to Google and find out, um, and I couldn't really find anything. He looks like he was on something. Maybe he was just. Maybe he was angry. Maybe he was. Maybe the people. Okay, this is kind of a reach. I was gonna say maybe he's trying to like get revenge for white people killing black people. What, hold on, we don't know the, the I don't I didn't see the pictures of the people who were shot. I don't know. I'm, if I'm I don't honestly know if I honestly assumed I don't know for some reason off yeah. the top I assumed they were white. That's just why I just assumed right away. I don't know why I did that. I you know did. what? I'll I'll go far to say that they, they he might have shot at other black people. Because pe- so? black I'm saying black people in America are very, very cautious before they shoot the gun at a white man. I I'll keep it I keep it I keep it <laughs> Maybe not Shannon Brown if he was on drugs. They double think before they shoot a gun at a white person in America. That's that that's what that's what I know. They're probably the people might have been minorities. I'm saying that Shannon Brown probably shot at minorities. I thought they were white, but yeah. that's just me. All right, I, yeah, man. I hope we get some help because that was that's that we don't me. even know if he needs help. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he was testing maybe he was testing out the gun maybe their backs were turned and they left yeah. the house and he's like now's my chance to chest test out the distance on this gun and he yeah. wasn't trying to shoot at the people yeah. but they happened to be in the way of where he's practicing <laughs> shooting the gun and they thought he was shooting at him but uh, they thought they were that he was shooting at them but he wasn't actually okay all right. I like, I like where you're going with this. All right. I'm here for you, Shannon. <laughs> he, was, he was testing the firearm, making it seem yeah. like... Yeah. <laughs> Maybe there was, like, watermelons in the distance that he was trying to aim at. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. So, um, all right. So, this is another topic. This seems to be, like, a, a constant topic between us. Uh, it's cheating. But why we bring up cheating is because uh, NFL player uh, Earl Thomas, he, I don't know what he was doing. This is in the height of uh, the pandemic. Mm-hmm. He got into an argument with his wife. His brother picked him up. Her name and, is Nina, by the way. Just and she to pulled out the that. Nina. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to say that. <laughs> yeah, so, so Ninas don't play. Uh, yeah, so don't. dude got into an argument with his wife. His wife. Uh, his brother picked him up after the heated argument, and they went off into somewhere. And his wife, concerned, as, as a wife should be, uh, logged into his Snapchat. I don't know how he got the location on the, on the thing, but she's smart. And uh, she pulled up with her friends. No, I know how. She, she opened his Snapchat maps. When yeah. you log into someone's Snapchat, it shows you, even if your location is turned off, like yeah. my location is off, I can, it still shows me where I am exactly, what address oh. I'm at. So you can, if you're in someone's account, you could do that. Is so fucking smart. I'm keeping that tool. Hopefully, I don't ever have to use it, but I'm keeping oh, that tool. Hopefully, you don't ever have to use it either. <laughs> uh, and so... Uh, from from there she went to go check on her husband and she he found her her husband with naked uh with his brother as well with another woman so they're doing some freaky things <laughs> yeah <laughs> ah and she she pulled out the gun on him not knowing that there there's a bullet in the chamber and um she almost she almost killed off her husband allegedly mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. not allegedly but like oh well, what's your thoughts on this on this on this story i think she's a fucking genius i oh, i am going to keep that like that is so smart most times when like girls suspect their guys cheating or there's after an argument or something like nobody really thinks about i never think about snapchat locations because i don't yeah. use it so i just like if anything like i i would check i don't know messages on snapchat i wouldn't think about that i don't know i think she's really smart yeah that's pretty smart to be honest 
I mean, do you, over the overall, it's like I gotta just say, Earl, bro, bro, what are you doing? And, and the way that he tried to get in front of the story too was on some dumb shit too. Yeah, like, what did he, he was, say to get in front of it? Because I saw that he was doing an interview the next day or something. He was like TMZ. No, he did a video on his on social media. He was like okay. TMZ got to hold this information. Uh, you know, just you know, things happen. Just you know, keep us in your prayers. I'm like, Fuck out of here. Bro. Oh yeah, I saw that. Oh, and then bro. his wife got him. His birthday was like two days later, and his wife gave him his this like iced out chain, which she probably brought for, bought for him before the incident, yeah. and like gave it to him anyways. But hey, man, it just goes to show that uh, you know, things happen in the marriage, and you just. <laughs> This goes into the question, is cheating acceptable if the man is rich? No, no, no. So I forgot I put this here. There is, so I saw this tweet. It was talking about yeah. another cheating incident that happened. Yeah. And someone responded and said, because uh, the girl was just like shitting on her ex-boyfriend at this point and all yeah. the stuff he did. She basically, she was on her laptop and then uh, she went on to his laptop and he said he was like, going oh, somewhere i think i know the tweet you're talking about yeah, yeah and the message he was actually at the club and every text right. message was coming in on the laptop yeah. and then she showed it to him so then someone replied and said wrong this motherfucker isn't shit i bet if i had the rundown of their relationship i could tell you where he revealed himself to not be shit way yeah. before they lived together yeah. women love confidence men who pull have high confidence shy guys don't women don't often like shy guys yeah you know what uh going back to the thing i used to say because I got it from a uh, other guy named Star. He was like, a woman, he's like, a woman knows the type of man she has, but she chooses to constantly lie about the type of man that she has. I, you, I, you know when a man has that type of eye, the wandering eye, a woman picks up on what type of man she has. And so she chooses to stay with him, knowing that that is not the right man for her. But you know what? I think a lot of times, and I've seen it from experience with friends, like a lot of times women are, because women are just nurturers, we're compassionate, like we're made like that, regardless of, you could think you met the most cold hardest bitch in the world, but she will have some kind of compassion in her. Yeah. And women truly believe that when that happens and they really love somebody, they think a man can change. Or if that's the only form of love they've known their whole life, they, they truly believe that he's going to change for them. And so I feel like that's why people stick around even when they see the signs that he's not shit or like whatever. And then they, mm. they just think they're going to change. But then if it happens more than once and it's just like, what are you doing at this point? It, it, it goes, so I'm going to bundle, uh, again, we have Kalani talking about there's ups and downs inside a relationship with YG. And then, you know, she thought that they got over it, but, you know, things went left after the Grammys. And as well as, I don't know if you see, I didn't post it on there, but Snoop Dogg's wife posted a picture of saying, don't ask me for relationship advice. Uh, advice. I took the man back 86 times or something like that. Which what some people looking about is like, that, that might be funny, but like, it kind of seemed true at the same time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it, and there's another uh, conversation I saw on YouTube. My algorithm popped this up for me. It was like, a woman was like, I'll, I'll become a side chick to a man who has money. So does it really show if a man is confidence, if a man has status, and if a man has money, a woman is willing to bend her morals and her principles just to be in his graces. Is this true? Would you believe this? I don't know. I know for myself, if I spoke mm -hmm. on myself, I would say okay. no. Okay. Because that's a doesn't bother me. We've seen an example of me actually. That, I'm joking. I need to stop bringing up this no, four-year expired it's, celebrity it's, star. Oh yeah, it's, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> all right. But but, talk, but, but other but, women, other yeah. women, I can see. I could see how other women would yeah. do that. Yes. All right. So has has uh I guess society popularized and normalized cheating in a way that women have to accept it when it's coming from a man with status you know, confidence and money. Yeah, because if you look at people, like people will always say, look at how uh, Gucci and his wife stuck together mm -hmm. or Beyonce and Jay-Z or Cardi and Offset now. Like, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people will always point at them for examples and say like, you know, just part of the ups and downs. If you stick through it, you'll be fine. Like, it'll be fine. Look how good these people worked out. And so, yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't know, man. It really depends on like, and then that's the other thing too is like, so I don't know, did I put this on the page? I might've put it on the page under another topic. Yeah. Um, actually it's in the next topic. Yeah. So, okay. So the next topic, bring it up and then I'll talk about my point or you want me to, okay. Basically Kalani did an interview in the breakfast club. I, that's what I just said. I just mentioned that you noticed, right? Oh, that was the transition into the topic. <laughs> I get it. I mentioned, cause I bonded it all together. I was like Kalani and then. Sorry, and it's been so, a long day. Yeah. But Kalani, like, yeah, but even okay. Kalani, she was like, she mentioned, she was like, 
ups and downs and shit like that. Yeah, but so yeah you did totally get into this okay so for me (laughs) sorry my phone screen is locked um so yeah um another so i had a conversation with a friend in england um and this was recently like two weeks ago and basically uh long story short her and her husband are no longer together Mm. and they were married um pardon infidelity yeah infidelity on her part um Ooh, that means that shit is really over. When a woman cheats, it's emotional. Well, no, that shit well, was dead. That shit was so, dead three months ago. So she, yeah, well, it, it kind of was. Because when I met her was when um, she said they were still like, like that, when I met her was like the make or break point of their relationship. Yeah. Um, but that shit was dead, honestly, a long time ago. Yeah. So yeah. basically, uh, they're not together anymore. And he's, but now he wants to get back together with her and work things out. But don't yeah. do it to yourself, King. Don't do it to yourself. So, um, but she told me, she's like, for me, it's a type, like every, she's like, everyone's going to cheat. Like humans are not loyal. All humans will cheat. All the shit. And I was just like, oh, okay. And then she's like, <laughs> And then she said, for her, it's not cheat. So because of that, it's not cheating that breaks a relationship. It's the kind of cheating. Are you just kissing them? Did you guys have sex? Okay, you had sex. Did you have sex in my house in our bed? Or oh, did you have sex in your that car? Was associated with the cheating. Exactly. That's what she looks at it as. And um, yeah, like, I, I don't know if other people look at it like that. I don't nah. look at it like nah, that. Nah, man. I look at it, I look at it as like this, right? So even I can even go into double standards and say when a man cheats, he's only doing it out of pure lust and physical. I hate when people relief. say that. Oh, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Um, I, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying this is true. I'm not saying mm-hmm. it's true. I'm not saying, and I'm not saying I'm not even trying to vouch for it. And I'm just bringing up a perspective. Uh, but when a woman does it, she since a woman is so nurturing and caring, and, and when a man penetrates a woman, it's not only just a physical release, but it's more so an emotional bond that is forming between the, the woman and the man in her mind. Mm-hmm. So when a, for, when a, for a woman to step out on her husband, it's, it, it was more difficult for her to do it. It took more of a, more of a pushing for her to get to that point as where to man, it's more of a, uh, I, I was- Second I, nature. I, 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 I had an opportunity and I jumped on it and it was just there. You know what I mean? Yeah, I hear you, but yeah, I don't know. I I disagree with that whole that's cheating fair. thing, and that's fair. yeah. Oh, so you watch? Do you watch Tyra Banks? Do you even care about Tyra Banks? I don't. Uh, I never watched America's Next Top Model. You, you like uh, watch her talk show? No. No. Oh, you don't really get into. I it. saw you, this. This though. Yeah, you saw it. And what do you think when you read it? What do you think about it? I don't think Tyra Banks is sorry at all for how she. Acting. I don't think she is either. And she's on her pedestal and she's like, I still fucking bought you guys America's Next Top Model. I yeah. made these bitches and is just like, that she's just saying sorry because she got caught. She's not sorry. She's sorry she got caught. It's not even getting caught. It's not even getting caught because the thing was on national, natural broadcast. Yeah, but she's sorry it's getting like resurfaced at yeah. it more because back then it wasn't yeah. really caught. Like it wasn't a big deal back yeah. then as it's, much as it's being made into it's now. Called, what, what's it called? Revisionist history or something? Or revisionist... Uh, Persecution type of thing. I, I yeah, so uh, for people who don't know, Tyra Banks has been going viral. Her post has been going viral on the internet because of her past of American Top Model antics and her stuff that she did on the Tyra show. And a lot of people are looking at that as like, yeah, that's really disgusting type of nature that Tyra Banks would even do that. And so she, you know, got a, she sent out a little tweet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, I looked at it and was like, go on, girl, go on, girl. But maybe that brings us to the point where it's like a lot of people have said that nowadays in society, people are very sensitive much more than they were back then, which Mm -hmm. could bring us into our next topic about Adele. That was a good segue. I like that. I like that. I like that. (laughs) I made it up, made up for myself. Um, So Adele lost a shit ton of weight, super skinny, like Mm -hmm. uh, posted a picture in a dress. Hold on, hold on. Congratulations, Adele. Yes, congratulations. Um, but people are mad about it. And like a lot of people, so this one guy tweeted something saying that basically everyone who is saying like she looks, Adele looks way better now. Yeah. Um, he just says, like he said, Adele has always been attractive. You're all just fat phobic. Mm. I don't know if I agree with that. What is fat phobic? Because I feel like that's a new word that just came out within the last I don't know. Everyone's fucking two and a half years. <laughs> everyone's everything phobic at this point. But I don't know about you, but if I lost that much weight, I would yeah. want people to notice. Yeah. 
yeah. I wouldn't want nobody mm-hmm. to say nothing so they don't hurt other people's feelings. And then like my other thing is like because he was saying basically he was asked about his tweet and shit and everyone he was like um how okay it's wrong that people are saying she's attractive now because she was always attractive which everyone has choice everyone has yeah. uh, preferences so some people yeah. wouldn't find her attractive then yeah. um but he, like and he's saying it's upsetting to anyone who has her old body type to see those tweets but i'm wondering why is it upsetting to them are these people who had those old body types are they trying to lose weight or are they just sitting around complaining about how this is fat phobic i don't i don't get it exactly. like you know what i mean i don't know that just pisses me off and then it's like we always talk about how people are always being all body positive and blah, blah, blah. Like when it came to Lizzo and Adele and whatever, but it's like, it gets to the point where it's like, shit is just unhealthy and you're going to die of heart yeah. disease. You know, I've, I've come to the point where, <laughs> where society <laughs> wants to see fat people. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Like it's, it's, Yo, it's we, crazy. It's like, we see a fat kid or a fat person who's like, you know what? Have an extra drumstick. Don't let these people tell you anywhere. You know what? Scarf down that whole buffet, bitch. Like, fucking kill yourself. <laughs> like, that's literally what they're saying. Like, give yourself heart disease and die. It's insane. You and, know, like, <laughs> I want to know if the guy who tweeted this likes girls with her old body type. Because That's a, that's a good question, too. Yeah, like, that's what I, they should have asked him that in the interview. Like, Is I want to know type? that. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I want to know. To be honest, for all the people who are, who are jumping out and saying stuff like that, I need them to, to really go like, you know what? I prefer a big boned person in my corner. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? There's some people that like that. And also, as, as females out there or women out there, girls out there, uh, there, it's easier for a chubby girl to get to get guys to still smash and still do stuff with them. It's not Sagittarius Shardy is an example. I was... I was <laughs> Were you going to say that? I was, I was, but like, I wasn't at the same time. But yes, that's a prime example because body, sh- body weight for, 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 certain, for certain females and stuff like that is not, it's not a, a prerequisite for them to get to draw attachment from the males it's just more so is that what i want on my arm to be honest (laughs) yeah (laughs) and it's like yeah i don't know i just think like it's it's you can't tell people to be offended at someone else's successes that's not how the world works let the people claim their success and like stop saying it's hurting other people's feelings who had her old body type that pissed me off so much because there's been points in my life where people have gotten people who are have different body types than me is my thing echoing yeah it was it was, it was phasing in and out i don't know you good now i don't know is it now yeah it's good yeah um so there was a point in my life where people who didn't have the same body type as me were putting me down for being smaller or skinnier than them and i was like exactly how is that my fault like i i don't know that just really triggers me to be honest like that it's, said that, so. to be honest I, and i read the statement that her uh, pr put out there and it was like adele lost the weight for herself and her family to stay healthy and stuff like that and i remember having this conversation with d range a few months ago and i was like lizzo is going to say the same thing she's like 30 something right now right mm-hmm. when she gets closer to 40 and she's starting to be pushing 40 lizzo's going to give a body transformation and her prs are going to say the same thing lizzo, lizzo did it for her health and her exactly. family and longevity. It's always they do it for their health and longevity. But we, but when we, when the the the, the outside is saying, "Hey, man, lose some weight. You're kind of big. You don't look healthy." Go, and he's like, "Don't worry about being fat phobic and all that." So when, so it's not no longer fat phobic when we're when we're saying, "Hey, man, you look big. You big and you look unhealthy." But when they come back around and change it for themselves, it's like, "Yo, I do it for my health." So, so what's the difference? What yeah. someone else is telling you you need to do it for your health but when you start to realize that your body's not as young anymore and the older you get the bigger much more weight you have on is the harder it gets to, your- to breathe walk everything yeah. your, your ankles are going to be like your bones are going to be so brittle you're going to have arthritis you know with mean? all the weight like it's not good you know what i mean so it's like hey man good, good job adele she's looking cool too looking you're looking yeah. like you know what i mean she might got a little you know what i mean <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> and so, uh, what's your name? Kaya? 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 Kia? Kia? Yeah, I don't know if you really want to talk on that. The, my neck, it. my back. Yeah, I mean, she she looked really crazy to me. Every time I see her on my thing, I, she looked kind of crazy. I'm like, what the hell is this girl? But yeah. she only gets one hit song, My Neck, My Back, and then she probably has some other follow up. I didn't I even know who she was. I Googled her and then I saw that song. I was like, oh, I know who yeah. she is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then this is the last minute topic that I added uh, just recently. Uh, it is boosy. I think I feel like this is gonna go viral as the days go on after you drop this. Yeah. So make sure we're just gonna talk about it a little bit. But Boosie went on live, I believe yesterday or, or something like that, and admitted 
to having some grown ass woman top his son. As and as well, he went on even further, topped him too. That's disgusting. I, I topped his son. She was like, "Yeah, she, I know that pressure. I know she, I know she working with because she gave my son top. She gave me top. I raised my kids the fuck. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's crazy. That's nasty. I will never, ever, ever have kids with anyone who ever thinks yeah, that's man. okay. Like that's just, his kids. Like what, 12, 13? Yeah, kids. What? Well, yeah, yeah, preteen. That's nasty. That's like. That could be a charge. <laughs> that could be a charge on the girl. Yeah. And Poor even on Boosie woman. for like negligence, parental what negligence. Yeah, I that's... think that's very disgusting, to be honest with you. I wouldn't like that's something about it is rapey to yeah. me. I don't know what it is. Something is triggering rapey. For, for, I see, like I'm saying, oh, yo, you're gonna do something strange for some change. And that woman most definitely did. I don't yeah, know if you paid her or maybe she just got don't found it by his status. I don't that's know, but disgusting. And like, how do you feel? Ew, like Oh my god! Did did I'm literally that. gonna barf. Like, and, like that's and, disgusting. And that's is like I said, where we at in society is is tattletale culture. Yeah, like that's, <laughs> that's nasty. I can't tattletale even... culture. This is what we do. We expose shit. That you might as well just expose who she is at this point. Exactly, and uh, and, and more de- degeneracy type of thing as well. He says he he doesn't want his kids, you know, be watching TV because there's a lot of gay characters. He'd rather give them iPhone so they could watch Pornhub and all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boosie yeah. where he went in, man. And the thing is, Boosie's so solid, but dude, he's so street that people might just go like, you know what? He won't even hear us. You know what I mean? He's so stuck in his ways. He's so solid of an individual. He's so gangster about his that, you know, what the other says don't even matter to him. But you know what? Now that he's posted this video, somebody could call CPS on him. Yeah, who knows? Some, I'm not doing it, but I'm saying someone could. Who knows? Maybe someone already has. Maybe come on live like two days from now and go, hey, you, you bitch ass motherfucker yeah. trying to get kids, me out of here. Where's the kid's mom's? The kid's mom. I don't, know. I don't know, but I guess I think he has a lot of the kids living with him. And I think the only kid that's not living with him is one of his other kids living with his other baby mom. I believe I could be wrong. I could that be wrong. That is disgusting. Like, that's not, I get you're trying to make your kid, but like, that is so. And is it, would that be considered anti, like, gay, like, homophobic almost? Because he's saying, I feel like he's kind of alluding it to the fact that, like, I don't want my kids to watch TV because there's so many gay characters, so I'm going to get a bitch to give him top. Well, I feel like those are not mutual exclusives. I feel like one is, one is... I'm reaching a little bit. Yeah, is one is more so hyper-masculinity, and the other one is more so, I, I guess, homophobia, maybe? I don't know mm-hmm. you want to say that. It's- yeah, I don't know. I just think... It, it makes it may, if, some people might say those kind of mutual issues of well. That's what I'm saying. So that's probably right. <laughs> how it is. That's probably how it is in his head. He hasn't said it explicitly, but yeah. that's probably what it is in his head that he's thinking, and that's why he did yeah. it. But that's no justification. That's disgusting. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's that, yeah, yeah. I mean, I got see now it doesn't make what Claire said about his kids having a big penis as bad as what you know what you're comparing to it, say a boozy. Still right? nasty. <laughs> Both of them are still and actually I have news for you. I What's talked that? to other people about that and they said it was not normal. Ah, oh, come on, man. Come on. Like, come on. Come on. My I boyfriend said that. it was my boyfriend said it was not normal. And oh, come on. My come poor, on him. My poor. Him. <laughs> him, I was not expecting that from him. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, neither is that. <laughs> I'm outraged. <laughs> and my poll question was more on the side of, yeah, it's fucking, I think it was 70, 71% of people said it was weird. Ah, oh, come on, man. Only one person DM'd me and it was like a, like a promo page and they were just like, it's just because of the generation we're in. And I was like, ah, mm, okay. Yeah. So I was talking to someone else. She, she was a girl and she was like, it's not, it was never meant to be seen as like, pedophilia it was more so just taking pride in the 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 shape of my my child he said it in in jest in jest disgusting so like just right. leave your kid alone man just right, leave so your we, kids we, alone. we don't got that much time left yeah but uh we have uh we a just few touch on t- eric a minute oh no 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 we want to talk about the yeah yeah go go go, go. yeah so so let's let, let's talk about like things briefly because last week when we uh, did the podcast uh more news broke out of a man named um ahmad or ahmad arbery yeah. He was, uh, there's a video, a gruesome video actually popped up on the internet of him being shot down in broad daylight in the middle of the street going by for two a white folk going for a jog. Uh, the white people or the, the, the people who shot him said he, they looked like he was what, robbing or uh, there was they, a, there were, there was previous, like throughout the week, I guess somebody was robbing the cars in the neighborhood, yeah. like breaking into the cars. And they thought, cause he's a black guy jogging through the neighborhood. It has yeah. to be him. Yeah. So shot well guilty by well, not even association but it's just like guilty just by look 
just by you know the way I mean? he looks yeah just by the and so skin. that was really sad a lot of people are up in arms about it because mm-hmm. this happened to, this took place in february and the people were not arrested until may yep. and uh some people are me even myself is like it happened so long ago so what did they tell the coroner when they came in and examined the body and the police that and the fbi or, or whatever homicide detective or maybe just death detective came what did they tell them to make them justify this well, for so, them not to follow up so yeah, this oh yeah yeah cool you only oh, got about okay. six minutes. yeah yeah so what i was going to say was so the father because it was a father and son and then yeah. their, their friend or whoever was filming it another white mm-hmm. guy who also by the way is not arrested um so their father allegedly not allegedly he worked for the da the district attorney in georgia for 30 yeah. years and he was a police officer for the last seven years as well so that's oh. how he got away with it okay so yeah my word against yours and so yep. my and word so is- that's why now there's a petition i signed both petitions there was one petition before the arrests happened to arrest them um arrest them and yeah. then the other one is now to get this district attorney up out of there because she just let it happen exactly that is that is also honestly terrible yeah. and then um when we saw that which was kind of like really nasty to see uh there's another person sean reed he was speeding i'm not gonna even i don't want to touch on it too much because that I don't want to even put that in the same lane as uh, Ahmad Arbery. It, yeah, was, I get you. Dude, dude, dude could have uh, committed a crime. I think the only thing that just seemed really overkill was the fact that the Wait, cops emptied up. out the clip and then said it was going to be a closed cast. Exactly. But, I know. I mean? I'm so happy you said that because I agree. I, I don't think so. Sean Reed was uh, on a car chase. He led the police on a car chase yeah. after doing something. And then he got out the car, had it on Facebook Live, and then he got killed. They shot him multiple times. They shouldn't have killed him. That was yeah. wrong. But he's in a different case than yeah. Ahmed because Ahmed literally went for a jog and he was only 25 years old. Yeah. Like, that is fucking insane to me. I couldn't even watch the video. Like, I, I, I was on it. And then I heard the shots and I, I couldn't watch it. Like I get yeah. so, I just can't like piss me off. Yeah. So that's the only thing. And then people started marching for Sean Reed. I'm like, come on, we need to, I just focus our efforts in, in a more particular mm-hmm. way. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Especially right now, like this is not a society where you want to even agitate cops like that, knowing what the, the history is. You exactly. know what I mean? Like you want to just be more cautious. Uh, less of the time. Uh, we have uh, Amanda Seals who I think I, not to say I don't like her, I don't know her, but the way that she portrays herself to us and the world, she really seems like a nasty person. Just be putting extra sauce on things that don't even yeah, I have hear extra you. sauce. It's on. like her, her, but her, her personality on Insecure and in real life is so different to me yeah. that like I didn't even know it was the same person at one point. But yeah, so she posted a video basically mocking, it was mocking a song. I can't remember what song. I think it was a Teddy yeah. Pendergrass song. Mm-hmm. Um, and she read the lyrics because she was calling out artists such as Justin Timberlake um, mm-hmm. and other white celebrities for turning off their comments on the Ahmed Arbery posts that they mm-hmm. posted to get people to like support and make them aware of the issue. Yeah. So my thing is, I personally don't see it as a terrible thing that they've taken off the comments yeah. because I was saying that maybe they turn off their comments, not because they don't want to confront or acknowledge these fans. Cause that which that's what she's saying is like, they have a bunch of racist fans and they just don't want to acknowledge that. Exactly. But I don't think they're turning it off because of that. I think either they know they have these fans and don't want to give them this platform to spread this hate under their posts yeah. or like the less likely thing is they don't know all there is to know about the injustice in these cases and don't want to spread misinformation because exactly. let's be real if they didn't post it some of their fans who aren't racist and might not have been aware of this happening such as people like me who didn't know these police killings were a thing until Tra- trayvon martin happened might have never known this was an issue exactly so i, I, I don't think it's a bad thing like i think I, it's good yeah. they're getting the awareness out there that's exactly that's what that's where i look at a lot of things like that is yeah you may not know everything but the fact that you you're trying to spread the word that's the positive thing the same way i look at people who who may film themselves giving food away or money away to the homeless and stuff like that i don't care if they're doing it for clout people are actually being fed and people are actually being and being helped it's just to get put this out there to, you know what let me share this let me let you know what would do if i'm doing something please take this information and look into it deeper yourself and be aware of it. You know, mm-hmm. ignorant, there's no, it's like the, like a judge would say, or anyone would say like, you know, being ignorant to certain things is no excuse, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's exactly what it is. And for her to like, I say like, she does 
this nasty and, and extra sauce and shit. That's not doesn't that necessarily need to be happening. Yeah, so like that like, was not unnecessary. Necessary at all. Yeah, unnecessary. and like I feel like she doesn't understand. Like she just expects things to go. Like her expectations are wild. She expects it to go from one to a hundred, like yeah. super fast. When it's like you got to understand it takes steps and I get it. It's frustrating for the black community because it's like, there's been these steps for years, but like she, I don't know. She just, that was so unnecessary in my opinion. Super unnecessary. Um, and I think I just want to end it off right there. Mm -hmm. All right. I think that was a great conversation. Yes, Uh, I think so too. We got there. We got, we got it. We got it done. (laughs) All right, people. Uh, we're going to like it. Like we do this. Like, I don't know what the hell it is, but like, Hey man, I appreciate everyone that's listening. This has been another episode of the educated and the reckless podcast with your host, Apollo PN. No better Nina. And we'll be back again next week and make sure that, you know, you stay plugged in because we'll be giving you guys more content as the, you know, continue the week go on. All right. Bye.